Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. It is Ask the Mayor. We have with us Nashville Mayor David Briley. Uh, this is your chance to call in. We have plenty of calls, so let's just go right to the phones. Let's go to Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Hey, I've Lucy. got a quick comment for you, and I've got a question that I've been dying to get answered in concisely, please. Uh, my comment is, I think you've got a lot of chutzpah. You have... You've come on open line several times in, in the past year since you've been mayor and answered our questions. I have not seen your opponent do that. I've seen the current vice mayor do that, but, but not Mr. Cooper. And I can't seem to understand his answers. He kind of beats around the bush. So kudos to you for that, Mr. Mayor. Here's my question, and, and, and I don't totally agree with you on a lot of stuff either. I just don't. But I respect you for that. My question is, uh, Mr. Cooper is saying that he can take this revenue that comes in from like the convention center and all these downtown businesses and whatnot and turn that revenue back into the neighborhoods. I've heard you talk about this some, but I want to nail this down tonight since I haven't heard Cooper explain how he's going to do this and how you talked about this m money's already dedicated. Can you explain this to all all of us out there if this is a possibility or not and thank you for listening thanks all thanks. right thanks Lucy I've answered this question uh, a couple times Ben you might know uh, so yeah the, the the truth is that uh, when we built the convention center uh, we drew what's called a tourist development zone and it was with some direction from the comptroller and frankly we drew it too big and uh, it covers a whole lot more area than we probably needed and uh, it collects more tax revenues than are needed to pay for the bonds on the convention center authority and uh, it would certainly be nice just to go in and shrink the zone down but uh, we can't do that uh, and there are a couple of reasons uh, some easier to uh, get past than others the easiest one to get past is there's a local ordinance that says here's the tourist development zone and this is what the size is going to be we could probably fix that the second one is that uh, there's a state law that sets out what the tourist development zone is and so that's a, a difficult thing for us probably a little bit more difficult for us to tackle but the most complicated part, and the thing that's impossible to get around, as far as I can tell, is that uh, we borrowed money from people all around the world and entered into bond covenants with them, contracts, that say we'll keep the tourist development zone just like it is until the bonds get paid off in a, a couple of dozen years almost. And so uh, it's not something that where we can go in that s set of circumstances and just start recouping all that money. It's even more complicated because a lot of that money is state money anyway. It wouldn't come to us. Now they have grown a surplus and uh, the surplus uh, can be used for tourist related purposes. And I'm the first mayor to go to the Convention Center Authority and get any of that money. I've gotten $10 million over the last two years from the Tourist Development Zone to help us uh, offset some of the tourist related um, costs associated with running the government generally like policing and fire and public works and we'll continue to work with the convention center authority to maximize that amount of money that we can get out of the tourist development zone but it's not uh, going to fix every problem like M councilman cooper says it is we can't go pay teachers more we can't rate it to to do the kinds of things uh, that, that uh, we certainly all want to do now one thing to also consider about it is that the property taxes collected downtown in the tourist development zone, almost all of those go directly into the general fund. Uh, they're not siphoned off to pay for the convention center or tourist related items. Some gets, a tiny bit gets stuck with some tax increment financing things that are not related to tourism, but the vast majority of it makes it into the general fund. Downtown in the 19th Councilmanic District, we collect about $150 million in property taxes every year. I think the number in the 8th Councilmanic District out in Madison is somewhere around, it's under 10. So what that means is that we're spending a whole lot of property taxes collected downtown from tourism in the outlying neighborhoods already. Um, we got to be cautious, I think, about blowing up the tourist uh, enterprise downtown because it actually does generate a lot of revenue that is already spent all around the county. 
And um, I really think this is, um, Councilman Cooper and I can agree or disagree about the facts or, 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 or the direction of the city. Uh, and I'm willing to do that, but I really wish he would stop saying this, and I really wish he had not uh, misled the community about what we can do with the tourist money downtown. Because fundamentally, uh, we can't do a lot of the things he says we can do with it. And fundamentally, uh, it's wrong to mislead people about what it's going to take to move the city forward. Um, and ultimately, it's, there's not some easy win out there to fix all of this stuff. We do need to invest more in our neighborhoods, but it's not going to come through some magic bullet of the tourist development zone. There is a frustration <clears throat> that it maybe was drawn too big. Sure. It's sitting there pretty with a lot of money, sure. and teachers and, and other groups mm -hmm. don't have the money um, they would like. Sure. And so you're saying there's some things that, that prevent us from, from really going in and doing that, but are there... Are there some ways we can get some additional money? You, you, you said you've, you have sure. them paying for overtime for special events and that kind of thing. But what is realistic? It's very frustrating to see all that money sitting there sure. and we have all these needs over here. Sure. Um, well, we'll continue to work to try and identify as much as we possibly can from the operating revenues there that can come to the city. Um, even of all the revenues that do get collected there, it's not like we can go and take all of them. Uh, it's like, I think there's six different streams of revenue, some, prop, some sales tax, some state sales tax, um, some room taxes, some uh, rental car fees, and only a small portion of that actually can come to the city to pay for the tourist-related costs. It's just not that simple. Uh, I wish it were, trust me. Uh, I would have loved in my first budget to go on and, and spent uh, all the money that was there to avoid a very difficult budget uh, season. Um, I would have done it if I could because the pain that people suffered in that budget was real. Um, I have no uh, obligation. I'm not beholden to the tourist industry, but I am obligated to live up to the law, and the law didn't let us do what Councilman Cooper is proposing. And so metro law and a state law, and then there's the bonds, how they were negotiated. Right. Mm -hmm. Could we, this is my last question on mm -hmm. this, it could, there again, is there money sitting there? Could we somehow instruct um, the Convention Center Authority to pay off the debt more quickly. If, if it's sitting with all sure. this money, can we use it just to pay this thing off? Uh, not right now. Uh, we don't. There's not enough there right now to pay it all off. There's still more debt than there is uh, reserves. Uh, they're also a very an unusual kind of bond. I think they're called Invest America bonds that were issued during the uh, the Great Recession. So the prepayment penalties are very are very punitive to do that. So it would probably cost us more than it would be worth to do. Look, we've we've looked at all of this. The the lawyers uh, representing the city on the bonds have met with them repeatedly to look, go over these facts, to look at it closely, and um, and if it were simple or doable, trust me. I would have done it by now. Okay. All right, Lucy, thanks for the question. Let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann. Y yes. Go right um, ahead. I'm sorry, but I've got to be honest. I really wasn't sure of your support with the COB when they first were brought in and formed, and I'm even less in sure of your support with them now with the fact that they're unable to get the records and the documentation to do what they've been elected and sworn in to do. As mayor, are you willing and are you going to step in and see that they are able to get the documentation that they're trying to get? From the police department, she's talking about the community oversight sure, board. Sure. Um, so the police department maybe there there reports the police department hasn't turned over information requested by the board. Um, you know, are you are what what do you think about that? Sure. So uh, I for the first time in the city's history, I believe uh, uh, when I became mayor, uh, I hired somebody to come into the mayor's office and be a public safety and justice advisor. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, young man, I can call him, is working hard to make sure that this gets worked out. I got briefed on this particular issue last week. Um, there is an issue. 
uh, the the police department and the community oversight board are in the process of uh, of working out a memorandum of understanding about a whole lot of issues, including the public records uh, requests, uh, and how they will work, whether or not the COB is going to be treated just like a, like a metro agency asking for records or if they're going to be treated more like a member of the public asking for records. And so we're trying to work through that. I will be going to the COB. Um, I'll be talking to them I think it's tomorrow and this will, this issue will be coming up uh, tomorrow when I talk to them. As mayor, um, what would you like to see? Would you like it to be like a member of the public or a metro agency? Well, um, they're not a law enforcement agency, so it can't be like a law enforcement agency. I don't think it can be just like the district attorney, where the district attorney's office shares essentially an open book with the police department, because there'll be some issues that are sensitive for invest ongoing investigations and other reasons that it shouldn't be made available. But uh, certainly there's no reason for um, the COB to have to pay for the cost of getting the records. Um, and uh, I do think uh, uh, we need to make sure it's a seamless, rapid process that um, acknowledges the importance of the COB here and uh, made that clear um, to the COB. And uh, if we can't get it worked out with the chief, I'll make sure the chief understands that he needs to get this worked out. And for somebody like Ann, who then questions your support of the Community Oversight Board, sure. Um, it, this could be a way the police department doesn't want to cooperate with this board and, sure. and they don't want to give them records. You know, yeah. what, so what, what do you say when Ann's concerned about that? Well, uh, we have been working hard to make sure that the COB has all the support they need. And I think if you ask members of the COB about uh, what we've been doing to help, I think you'll get a report from them that we have been working diligently to get this issue resolved. All right, we have to take a break. Uh, Taylor, others, hold on. Uh, we'll take a break. We have plenty of calls. Take your call right after this.